Good morning, good evening. It's Serena Michaels here coming to you with another little insight from everyday living in the shamanic worldview. I want to just bring you blessings and greetings and love to you wherever you are on Mother Earth's skin, whatever time zone it is. Whenever you're watching this, may it bless you. Namaste. Today I had an experience with a beetle and two of my grandchildren. We were at a playground just enjoying a beautiful day here in Southern California in the USA. And my granddaughter ran to me and said she had seen a beetle that was in distress. And what could we do to help it? So we all went to investigate and indeed there was a beetle, quite a large one, a big black beetle, maybe this big. And it was uh, in the sand uh, on the playground, on one side of the playground, where there's a cement wall holding the sand in place. Now, on the other side of the cement wall, and slightly higher, it's like a retaining wall in a way, uh, was grass and bushes and trees and the normal environment of a beetle uh, and of many other little creatures. But this beetle was in the sand uh, at the bottom of a cement wall, might as well have been a cliff or a mountain, as far as this beetle was concerned. And this beetle did not appear to have wings. It was not a winged beetle. And it just kept trying to climb out of the sand, which is very hot, by the way, the Southern California sun beating down on it. Climb up this cement wall. At the time, uh, I wasn't thinking uh, of anything except what can we do? Um, I don't want to disappoint my grandchildren. Uh, this poor little creature is in distress. How can we uh, help the beetle? It seemed like a simple thing. Pick the beetle up, put it in the grass. Well, <laughs> like many people, touching insects is not one of my favorite things. Now, I do recognize uh, as a shamanic practitioner that and someone as someone who embraces the shamanic worldview that everything is my relation and that everything is my teacher and that includes this lesson from for not only for me but for my grandchildren and that i needed to um, show them how to practice compassion for our all of our relations and in this case an insect who is uh, related to us and to whom we are joined energetically it was not an accident that we came across this beetle now this beetle and his consciousness has no awareness of us, just as we often have no awareness of the higher consciousness that is all around us. I was very much struck by the fact that sometimes we're in a similar situation. We're tired, we're hot, we're stymied. Uh, we don't know how to get over the wall or the barrier that's in front of us. If we turn around and go back, this beetle was facing this huge, long, hot trek across a sandy playground where children might step on him or hurt him. Uh, and really, honestly, to go back across the playground for this beetle would be like walking a mile in the hot desert for you or, or, or me. He was determined to get through or up over this wall and get away from this hostile environment. So we decided to help him. So one of us took our masks and laid it down in front of him and he, I'm not even sure he knew that it was what it was what we were trying to do he just was kept walking you know he climbed on the mask because he would what happened was he would climb up the wall and fall backwards away from the wall and then crawl back to the wall so we put a mask in front of him he crawled on it and then i gently lifted it up by both sides and we took him and put him into the grass and he we were of course delighted filled with pleasure that we could help this small creature bring him some cool relief from his hot hot torturous hellish um, task that he had been engaged in. And so we watched him and he crawled uh, an inch or two and then he just stopped. Boom. Dead still. And as we were watching, I wondered, had he died from overexertion or from heat exhaustion? But no, after a minute or two, he crawled away. So we realized that he was just resting. And we had a little conversation, the three of us, my two eight-year-old twin grandchildren and myself, had a little conversation about the beauty of his life, how much like us he is. He was tired, he needed to rest, and now he was gonna go find a cool place to rest, and we watched him crawl off into some tall grass. So, uh, you know, I got home, made the kids some lunch, you know, doing my grandma thing, 
but all the time I'm thinking about this beetle and how he reminded me so much of how we get stuck sometimes and we're just stuck and we're just pounding our head on it's like on a cement wall how do I get out of here and we try to climb up and we fall back and we try to climb up and we fall back and we're hot and we're tired and we're exhausted and we just feel like this will never end and how many times have you or I experienced some sort of intervention it could be a human intervention, it could be a divine intervention, it could be some kind of intervention that we're not even aware of how it happened or how we achieved getting up over the wall or through the wall or around the wall, but somehow we were there and it felt like such a huge relief and we needed to rest. And uh, many things in life can feel like that, a paradigm shift, uh, a, a, an impossible task that someone has set us, a changing uh, from one um, thought pattern to another thought pattern, whatever, anything. It can be anything. Um, that beetle's consciousness was really not aware of us saving him. He just accepted the help and moved on with his life. And so I'm saying that many times we are assisted by a divine agency or an agency outside of the realm of our normal consciousness and uh, that we need to just express our gratitude when that happens and keep going with our, our, our lives. All right, that's my little insight from uh, living life is in the shamanic uh, reality. Namaste.